Greetings folks, Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about adding some data to your map from a example local source. Now, you already know that spatial technology is not just, or am I dating myself here, bumper cars that are confined to a track. You know about bumper cars? They were at uh, amusement parks over the years. Anyway, you could only go within a certain track. You couldn't go outside the track. Well, geographic information systems and spatial technology is not like bumper cars. You could actually go outside of the track. Now, one way to do that is to think about, you've got access to data sources from the United Nations Environment Program, World Health Organization, on down to your local government, okay, and everything in between. So you've got access to a, a wealth, a boatload, a flotilla load, an armada load of data. And we're going to use one example in this lesson today. And that is we're going to map some water quality data from Water Watch Victoria. Now, think about this with me for a moment. Maybe teaching about water quality and rivers and flow isn't your thing. Maybe it's not something that you actually do. Well, I hope you do, but if it's not, that's okay too. Think about, okay, if I can map this kind of data, I can map other kinds of data that I might be able to use more readily in my curriculum. So I'm going to use this as an example, but I want you to think bigger picture, okay? Now, one vast set of data is from this Water Watch Victoria authority. This resource of data and maps is supported by the Victoria Department of Environment, Land, Water, and Planning, and includes a variety of river gauges, citizen scientists, gathered information, and more. In keeping with our theme of understanding the data that you're using at all times, Water Watch maintains guidelines, you can check them out here, on interpreting their data. While you can use their online maps that use spatial technology to examine data points along rivers and lakes, yeah, they've got their own mapping tools, like many authorities and government agencies and nonprofits, even universities have. But you may wish to bring in the data into a spatial technology platform, for example, ArcGIS Online, so that you can do further and deeper analysis. Now, on the WaterWatch data portal, you can filter by river catchment. Let's focus this study on the Bunyip River, located here on the water quality data for this catchment. Noting on the map that this catchment is located on the southeast side of Port Phillip Bay. The data for this catchment has already been downloaded for you, but you could access it here in the future. Now, access the data on the data portal for this spatial technology module. The file is named Melbourne Water Watch Bunyip Water Quality Data CSV, comma separated value. Save the file to your local device, noting its location. The CSV file format should already be familiar to you from your previous work in this component. Open the CSV file. I use Excel to open such things, and that's what I recommend you do as well. Noting the water quality information and the latitude longitude values that you will use to map the 100 records of information in the spreadsheet. Note that a few records in the table do not contain any latitude longitude values. As commonly happens when you access data, it will often contain erroneous or missing information. That's just the nature of it. You're using real data to solve real problems. Welcome to the world of real data. The goal is to minimize and manage error, not to eliminate it. And I think that's a good lesson for students as well. Open a new map in your web browser and access ArcGIS online, www.arcgis.com. Sign in with your ArcGIS online credentials. Go to Map, Add, Add Layer from File, and point to your CSV file, Import Layer. Because of the missing latitude longitude values that you noted earlier, you will receive a warning that not every record will be able to be mapped. No worries. You could have edited the table and deleted the records missing the location information, but it's instructive, I think, for students to encounter these real-world situations as they become familiar with and using data and its challenges. Therefore, missing data is a reality, and in my view, it's okay. Now let's go ahead and change the symbology or style of your data to, to better understand it. When the data is brought into the map, the smart mapping function in ArcGIS Online guesses at what kind of map you want to make. Here it defaults to site name as shown here. But you will override this in the next step. 
Go ahead and change the variable to be mapped. Under choose the attribute to map, change it to electrical conductivity and then done. Note the difference in the values along and across the Bunyip watershed. Does any spatial pattern exist? Now you might want to have some background to the students on water quality measures. What is dissolved oxygen? What is conductivity? What is turbidity, uh, etc.? What is pH? Look at the high conductivity value on Phillip Island as shown here. Next, change the base map. Change the base map to a satellite image and zoom in on this location. Since conductivity is a measure of water's capability to pass electrical flow and is related to the concentration of ions in water, hypothesize where these conductive ions are coming from. Might there be dissolved salts and inorganic materials such as alkalis, chlorides, sulfides, and carbonate compounds in the pond where the water quality data were collected? Save your map. If you would like to see an example of what your map should look like at this stage, go ahead and check this out. Here's the map that I made with the same data that you're using. Now let's dig deeper with the water quality data for a moment, shall we? Using your spatial technology skills, you could at this point dig deeper. You could change the style from counts and amounts, size, to counts and amounts, color, to obtain a graduated color map instead of a graduated symbol map, if you wish. You could also change the attribute that you're mapping to any of the other variables now in your map, such as pH, temperature, dissolved oxygen, or others. You could also look at this in different seasons. You could look at summer dissolved oxygen versus winter dissolved oxygen. You could look at uh, summer sulfate versus winter sulfate. <laughs> summer sulfate had me a blast. Summer sulfate happened so fast. Grease! Okay, the point is that you could use other tools. Also, you could use proximity to focus on only the stations within five kilometers of a landfill, for example. You could create the most efficient route for a hydrologist to visit each of the hundred stations in the shortest amount of time. If these last two sound intriguing, in the next component of this module, actually you will use the proximity and the route analysis tools. You could even download updated information for this watershed or other watersheds from Waterwatch Victoria. Those are just a few ideas on how to keep going and how to extend this lesson. But if you just use this lesson, I'm hoping it's going to plant some seeds and get you thinking spatially and using some geotechnology skills. Thanks.